few more uh, small examples to highlight the or emphasize the hot and cold inlet issue and also the issue of um, ints and floats and storage of data within objects. Um, <clears throat> so here we've got um, a pack object and a pack object is a I suppose a list concatenation object meaning that we have four independent uh, number so int integer and float inputs um, and then pack the, uh, the, uh, the pack object has four arguments each of those arguments um, refers to each of these inlets and you can have uh, several um, arguments I think you can have again up to about 32 which will give you 32 inlets so you can um, you can join together a number of different um, independent messages into a single list of uh, those items um, and if I if I do that um, so I'll oops I need to lock the patch uh, change the number in all of these and notice that nothing happens until I move the uh, leftmost um, object or the object with the uh, which is going to the leftmost inlet of pack um, at which point it causes output. So now um, we have, as our last message, we have 7, 25, and notice that because the argument, um, the second argument has a zero point, it's converting that 25 to a floating point, hence 25 point, uh, well, 25 point nothing actually, but um, uh, as our second item in the list. Then we have 0 0.16, which is... Uh, which is moving through a um, an int placeholder, if you like. The argument doesn't have a point after it, so it's truncating that number to a zero, hence zero in our um, uh, in our max window. And then 2.4, which is going into a float argument, which is giving us 2.4 at the end. Okay. So <coughs> again, um, the uh, these arguments are here to um, to denote the type of item that we are receiving. Um, and, uh, and I think this one's probably the most significant, 0 0.16. Um, if it gets sent to an inlet or gets sent to a placeholder that isn't a float, then it will be truncated. <coughs> so that's one thing. Um, and again, notice that the leftmost inlet was the only one that produced output. But that the other numbers were stored in the object prior to being output, so that although you know moving this doesn't produce output when I when I change the leftmost uh, number, then we can see that it was stored. It just wasn't being output, um, and and those numbers are remain stored in that object. So if I uh, make a button and send that to the leftmost inlet of pack then you will see that that number, every time I hit it, gets output again and again. Um, so this, th this object stores things. Uh, incidentally, the, 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 the number placeholders that we've got in here could be any number, or indeed they can also be symbols, which is a message type that we haven't actually covered yet. Um, but I could, uh, my, my initial numbers could be something completely different to those, so I could have them as uh, 5, I could have them as 67, uh, 92 and uh, 67.0 again. All right. Um, so, and incidentally, if I put in a, set, a, a fifth argument, which might be 100, um, we get an extra inlet, as you can see on the end there. But we're not actually using that one at the moment. Um, now, if I lock the patch and I press the button, then all of those numbers are sent out. Uh, so it's been they, they've all been stored um, and those are our initial values to be stored if I then change any of the numbers going into those and trigger output again actually I'm going to make a more complex uh, or a bigger decimal then <coughs> those are remembered too but remember 100 hasn't been changed so that remains 100 uh, 5.119 has been remembered. Um, 0 0.19 has gone into and updated 67. Sorry, it had gone into this um, 
argument here, uh, which is an integer, which is why um, it's been truncated to a zero. So zero went in, replaced the 92. Um, so that's why we've got zero there. 39 replaced the 67, 13 replaced the 5, and so on. Um, so that's a pack object. It, it um, groups a variety of messages into a single list. And then we also have an unpack object, which does exactly the opposite. Um, so in this case, we've got an unpack, again, with some stored numbers in there, um, which are our sort of initial um, uh, values, if you like, uh, stored as arguments, so one, two, three, four. So now if I click on the bang, uh, the button message, uh, um, so they, they, those were sent into the number boxes below the object. Um, and if I send in any of these other uh, lists, those are unpacked and then distributed among the four outlets. So zero, um, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five. So that one's fairly straightforward, I think. How are we doing for time? Six minutes. Uh, that's what we looked at earlier, so I'm going to delete that. And then we'll move to a simple uh, well, sound making um, example. Again, I'll get rid of things that are going to clutter the screen. But we'll ignore those for now as well, although we'll need them in a minute because they're not there. Okay. Right. Uh, so we, here we've got um, uh, some objects which we've come across before. We've got a make note out, out uh, object and we've got a note out object. Uh, the note out, if you remember, communicates with the internal synth on my, uh, in my computer. Um, and the make note is there to make notes of a specific duration. And what I should point out here is that um, MIDI, um, when you send a note to a, a device, you can't just send a note on, um, you can't just send the note number and have the note sound. You also need to send what's called a note off message to tell the, uh, the, um, the device when to stop that note. Uh, if you compare, for example, a, a percussion sound, um, you can imagine that when you um, trigger that sound, uh, it already the sound itself has a decay, so it will, uh, it will decay to nothing. Um, and so you might assume that on that basis you don't need to uh, switch the note off. Um, but if you were to trigger an organ sound, um, you start it playing, you trigger it, you send it a note on. Um, but if you don't turn it off, it's going to go on forever. And in fact, all mi MIDI um, sounds operate on that basis. Um, if you don't switch them off, then they start occupying more and more voices. And now most MIDI synths and MIDI samplers have a 16 voice or a 32 voice polyphony. Um, but once you've filled those up, they won't play anything else. So you need to send note offs in order to liberate those voices so that they can be used again by, uh, by other notes. Um, so that's what make note does. It sends note offs um, to, uh, to the uh, note out and then thence to your, your MIDI synth or sampler. Uh, the notes are of a specific length, so once the note has been triggered, um, it will wait 200 milliseconds in this case and then send a note off message. Now, just to point out, although I'll talk about this again at another time, you do get in MIDI um, specific note off messages, uh, but in Max, uh, it uses an equivalent, which is to send a note on message which is um, a note number, so the, no the key that you're pressing, for example, along with a velocity of between 1 and 127. So they are, if you like, positive um, velocity values and will give you a, a, a loudness. Its note off is a, uh, a note number along with a velocity of 0. So if you like, a kind of a, a neutral or an it's not a negative velocity, but it's a velocity that won't give you any sound. So that's if, if effectively its note uh, off message. 